Welcome to The Marcus Warren Show, powered by 960 Digital and the Wealth Empowerment Network. Now, here is your host, Marcus Warren. Oh, here we go on a Sunday. This is The Marcus Warren Show, the number one retirement and tax planning show in the region. I am your host, financial advisor, tax and road agent, and author of the retirement and tax playbooks, Marcus Warren. And I hope everyone is doing well on this Sunday. And to my left, I am joined by our resident tax professional, D. How you doing, D? Hello, and happy Sunday. And remember that if you miss any parts of the show and you want to catch up on anything you missed, all you have to do is subscribe to the Marcus Warren Show podcast via Spotify, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Now, throughout the show, we will be offering our retirement rescue game plan. Now, you may be asking yourself, if you're a brand new listener, what is that retirement rescue game plan, Marcus? Well, it's a physical packet of information that will help rescue your retirement from all the risks that threatens your nest egg once you are close and in retirement. Now, in that game plan, you're going to get a copy of my two books, a few different easy-to-read financial reports, and access to my webinar entitled Taxes in Retirement. And you can simply order that by going to warrenwealth.net. That's warrenwealth.net. You go to the site, put in your information, and that retirement rescue game plan will be delivered free of charge to your front door. Once again, all you have to do is go to warrenwealth.net. That is warrenwealth.net. Now, so there is a lot of stuff that's been going on uh, recently uh, in the news, a lot of topics, things of that nature. Um so much, so much stuff out there. Um, you know, we're not going to talk about yet another Trump, Trump indictment. We're not going to talk about uh, the blind side and that uh, lawsuit. Uh, we're not going to talk about, uh, our, the, although our, our, house go, our hearts go out to uh, the Maui wildfire, wildfires, those who've been involved in that. And we're definitely not going to talk about super lifelike humanoid robots that are in China. What we Wait a are, minute, what? Yes. We're not going to talk about it. Okay. What we are going to talk about is retirement, finances, and money. Why? Because money matters. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. Dollar, dollar. All right. So, um, believe it or not, the market has been uh, fairly volatile, um, at least really this month, uh, for the most part. Um and we were talking about being in this bull market um, last uh, last month, matter of fact, in July, because the market had bounced back um, 20% from its low. And actually, the market was up, specifically the S&P 500 was up um, about uh, 20% uh, so far this year. Uh, it's pulled back um, about 7% or, or so, so, but the market overall is still up, the S&P, is still up about 14%. And... You know, so there's been a lot of volatility in the stock market and retirees are always confronted with the difficult question of how to grow your money productively, but you also want to safeguard it against downturns uh, that you might not recover from. Um, you know, how do you outdistance inflation, which is, has been very prevalent uh, the last uh, year or so, and you want to ensure that your assets stretched the length of your retirement without uh, hitting uh, or having any dramatic market loss. And as you navigate those waters, you have to make sure you know the difference between running out of money too soon uh, and uh, having a comfortable uh, retirement. So let's do this. Let's uh, begin by, by talking about, uh, I guess, uh, the old school um, paradigms as it relates to stock market investing, right? The biggest one uh, that comes to mind is the idea that if you leave your money in the market long enough, that eventually you're going to come out on top, that the stock market always vindicates itself, right? Um, this paradigm also suggests that uh, the, this buy and hold uh, is a winning long-term strategy in retirement. And then lastly, we've been told that by simply diversifying our investments, you can protect against dramatic swings in the stock market. Now, that's the old school level of thinking, right? Now, stay with me here, because we've learned over the course of the last 10 years 
that the stock market is more unpredictable and volatile than ever, right? A buy and hold may have been a strategy that worked in the past, but it can be fatal to your retirement strategies if your investments fall at the wrong time. And then we also know that asset allocation is not sufficient enough to mitigate all the different types of risk that you face when you invest in the stock market. And then finally, if the stock market, if the stock, if the stock market, if the stock market, <laughs> if, it falls, <laughs> if it falls at the wrong time, it could force you to postpone retirement indefinitely. Think about this. Think about if you wanted to retire, you know, back in 2008, right? And the stock market uh, went down a 50%. You had a decision to make, didn't you? Where you were going to work longer or you were going to just retire with less. Or even as recently as uh, last year, right? When the market was down uh, a little over 20%. If you wanted to retire, were you going to just retire with less or were you going to work longer? Now, fortunately, the market has started to, to bounce back from last year, but it's about the timing of when you want to retire and when the market drops. Now, we always ask the question, you know, is your portfolio truly diversified, right? Because like I was talking about in 2007, 2008, most investors lost 30 to 50% of their portfolios. And how is that possible, given that investors had these diversified portfolios? And really, it's, it's, uh, it's simple, because investors, they generally, they, had, they didn't back then, and a lot of times they still don't protect themselves against all the investment risk that can lead to potential market losses. Now, when investing in the stock market, there are two basic types of risk that investors face. Now, understanding both risks can help you safeguard against them, all right? And so the first risk is what we call unsystematic risk, right? And unsystematic risk is the risk associated with having a single investment, right? All of your eggs in one basket, right? And most people can always think of the risk associated when you have all your eggs in one basket, right? If you had all your eggs in GE, so to speak, or, or Ford, you know, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, but we know a lot of things can go wrong, right? Um, uh, a CEO might die, like Steve Jobs and Apple. Uh, there could be poor management. Right? Products could flop. Um, fraud, like Enron or MCI WorldCom back in the day. But you get the idea, right? Um, and so what is the solution to having all your eggs in one basket, that unsystematic risk? And the solution is what most have heard. And that's asset allocation, right? And so the way to mitigate against uh, this risk is not to have all your eggs in one basket, right? And asset allocation basically is investing in a broad range of companies in a broad range of sectors so that if any one of them fails, then you got the others to, to buoy them up, all right? And so um, examples of asset allocation is, you know, having your money spread across different asset classes. You got U.S. stocks. Uh, non-U.S. stocks, you could have bonds, you could allocate between service, manufacturing, information sectors, but, but you get the idea, right? But the question becomes this, right? Was asset allocation good enough in 2008? No, it was not. Was asset allocation good enough in March of 2020 when COVID hit? No. Nah. And was asset allocation, did it benefit you last year when the market dropped 20 plus percent? And nah, right? Now, that is because asset allocation does it, it does not mitigate against the second investment risk I'm going to talk about. And that is systematic risk, right? And basically, systematic risk is, uh, that's the risk that's inherent to the entire market or the entire economy, all right. So um, what are some examples of that? Um, so you have uh, COVID, right? A pandemic, right? You have, what else do you have? You have war, uh, terror, terrorism, you know, things like that. And so that doesn't uh, protect you against systematic risk by having your whole portfolio uh, invested. And, you know, there, there's plenty of examples. I mean, you, you can have... Um, Let's say you had uh, a portfolio, a stock portfolio, and you invested in um, 
say you invested in the Russell 2000, which is the 2000 largest companies, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, which is, you know, kind of tech heavy there. And then the S&P 500, the S&P is 500 is 500 biggest companies, right? Now, between these four indexes, you would have had 2,600 different companies. But if you go back and you look from 2004 to 2000 and say, let's just go down to 2009, because right in 2008, uh, we know we had the, uh, the Great Recession, right? All of them went up and then they, they all went down back in 2008. All of them. And by the way, we're saying that we, had this, we have this diversified portfolio of those four indexes, right? Why is that? It's because of that systematic risk that I was talking about, right? You never know when uh, there's going to be a pandemic or there's terrorism that, that happens or we just hit a recession or a depression when pretty much everything goes down, right? And so the question becomes, how can you mitigate yourself against systematic risk? And the answer is just to make sure that you have what we call a, a principal protection program, Right? How do we define a principal protect, protected program? It's basically investments that allows you to offload some of that systematic risk and build what we call foundational assets. Um, uh, so, what are so what are some foundational foundational assets? Uh, you have um, uh, defined outcome funds. There's uh, these buffered index funds. There's uh, some real estate investment trusts, secured bonds, uh, some uh, fixed indexed annuities, things of that nature um, can provide you with that foundation for when the market does drop, uh, you have something that can basically prop everything up and you don't have to worry about that particular portion of your portfolio going down. All right. So you have to be very cognizant of how diversified your portfolio is. And then more importantly, do you have principal protected assets that can fight against that systematic risk when the whole economy or the whole market tanks? Think about those things. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about this a little more. And then we're going to also get into some retirement uh, pitfalls that can happen once you are not working anymore. You're listening to The Marcus Warren Show. <laughs> 